Hello, everyone, and welcome once again. We are the Talking Pearls. I am Carla Cargill, and we have the great, illustrious Constance Arnold. Oh, my God. Thank you. Hi, Carla. How's it going today? <laughs> Just fantastic. It's great to be back with you to dis continue our discussion on how to stop using that B word, the word broke. And today we want to continue with talking about affirmations and the power of words, because ultimately that's what an affirmation is. It's using the power of words to culminate an energy that will lift you up and manifest whatever it is that your intention is. And when you think about that power in words and affirmations, one affirmation that has resonated all throughout the world on a continuous basis. Many books have been written about it. Many sermons and messages have been spoken about it. Many movies even have been done with that affirmation. And it's just two simple words, I am. And we know that biblically speaking, God told Moses in Exodus, tell them that I am sent you. I am that I am. And, you know, just those words alone have so much power. And when I think about the words I am in that context, it took me a while to really understand, you know, and, and comprehend how I perceive what God was saying to Moses. And ultimately for me, I just came to the conclusion that he was saying that whatever it is that you need, I am. Mm. I am good, I am great, I am love, I am truth, and we can continue on. God is the great I am. So whatever those great I ams are, we know that is true. And in talking about that, I think about uh, my book. We're going to do a plug here. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> my book, Your Mind, Your Mouth, and Your Money, and it is available on my website, www.thefinancialtruth.com. And actually, the first chapter in that book is called The I Am In You. And really what it talks about it just really goes back to understanding that we are made in the image of God. And we were all taught that, especially if we grew up in, the, in a faith-based community and a, a home of believers, we were taught that we were made in the image of God. Right. And, you know, I think that, uh, and some people probably might still think it, but hopefully more have evolved to understand that that does not mean that we look like God, we have God's lips, we have God's eyes, we have God's nose. Mm -hmm. Really, it's getting to the point of understanding that being made in God's image means that we have God's heart, we have God's mind, we have God's soul, we have God's ability to do all things and be great and be wealthy and continue on with whatever God's goodness and greatness is. So in talking about that, it just says in my book, you are a living, breathing entity of God. Each one of us is filled with the spirit of God called by different names. So I am Carla Cargill, the manifestation of God on earth as Carla Cargill. And each one of that, each one of us ultimately embodies God. And that's partly what a lot of us need to be transformed into understanding. And if we can grasp that power and grasp that truth to know that whatever God is, I am. So in talking about I am's and referencing ourselves and I am's, we should never say I am broke. That's Ooh, how we no. start all our, our uh, presentations, talking about never to say the B word again. We should never say, I am broke. God is not broke. God has, is the greatest, the wealthiest, the richest, the most abundant. All creation. There's no end. There's no limit. So there's no way we can even see ourselves as broke because we are wealthy. We are living the abundant life. So I, I am Ooh, that's should be indicative of who God is. You know, Carl, oh, that's so good. It makes me want to get up and run around uh, my desk, but I'm not going to do that because we are recording. But this is great news during these pandemic times and any time, actually, because it shows people 
hey, no matter what I'm experiencing, no matter where I am or what I feel like I'm going through, I can begin to change from a broke way of thinking, a broke way of feeling, a broke way of not enough with I am. And I am is actually a law. It's a universal law that everybody who's watching this can tap into. And I see I am as consciousness, as, as our being. It's our identity, like Carla said, of who we are. And we know that I am is unlimited. Uh, it's infinite. And the only time that it is defined is when you decide what you want to add to I am. It is, right. all, it is always present. And whatever you add to I am will be added to you. And so you might be saying, well, Carl's Constance, I don't really understand it. Well, you're using it every day. Let me give you an example. When you say, I am so tired, or I am so frustrated about driving for 40 minutes in this terrible traffic. You're using I am and what you're saying will be added to you. And so it's a universal law that anybody can tap into. And I was sharing with Carla before we got started that, so we use I am really in three different ways with our affirmations or verbally, we use it with visualization and we use it emotionally. And a great example of that Carla would be, let's just say uh, we start saying and believing, I am prosperous. So you just, you just verbalized it and you know, I am prosperous. You begin to visualize it in your mind and then emotionally you feel it. I am prosperous. And over time, that vibration of the, your I am-ness, I just made up that word, will go out into the universe. Like it. it will bring you more prosperity. So this is good news for anybody who has felt broken or lack or scarcity or all of the fear that's going on globally, you can begin to shift away from possibly what you see and begin to create your new world, abundant world, just with the vibration and the law of I am. That is so true. I mean, you know, I think everyone on the planet probably at some time has heard at least once the words, in my opinion, who still is the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali. He, Ooh, yeah. he began using that I am the greatest in August of 1963. He actually recorded a spoken word album called I Am the Greatest. And he did that six months before he fought Sonny Liston. And at the time, I don't think Muhammad Ali really was anyone that people recognized or even knew who he was, except he had won an Olympic medal. But other than that, him being the greatest, I'm sure no one agreed with that <laughs> when he made right. that statement. But what's interesting about that, he fought uh, Liston six months later, and he did become the world's heavyweight champion. And in that point, he did become the greatest in the sense of the fact that he beat the world's heavyweight champion at that time. But he continued allowing himself to re let that resonate in his spirit. And like you said, it became a part of his consciousness. It became a part of his being, his energy, all aspects of who he was. And he even said that I, and let me quote this because I didn't realize okay. that he had actually attached this to what he had said. He said, I am the greatest. I said that before I even knew I was. Mm. <laughs> So the point is, is that he said it, and at the time, he probably really didn't per se believe it, but he knew that's what he wanted it to be. So he, he manifested that, he spoke it, and he allowed his intentions, his actions, his desires, every aspect of his being to make that true. And as you said, it's your consciousness, it's your energy, it's your words. So because of that, you know, you just can't say I am, for example, let's say I am, I said that I am a great singer. 
Well, right. if I don't practice, if I don't get singing lessons, because I am not a great singer, <laughs> but if mm -hmm. I don't get singing lessons and I don't practice and I don't put forth effort and intentions to make myself a great singer, then me using those words really have no power. It's until you add the actions, the intentions, the energy, your state of consciousness to the words that they truly become a part of the manifestation. Oh, that's good. That's a great story about Muhammad Ali. And for anybody who's watching, um, you might begin saying, I am prosperous. And like Muhammad Ali, didn't believe it, but because you are a speaking spirit and you're calling things into your life, and because anytime you speak out into the universe, faith feel words, it will bring back to you exactly what you believe and what you've spoken out. And so this is great news. This is bringing hope to people. Carla, and I think what it does when you're using the I am law is that it, it puts you in agreement with God. What is God saying about you? I am good. So you get in agreement with that. I am prosperous. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. You know, I am victorious. So you're getting in agreement with the words and with the vibration and with the image that God has spoken over you. So that's a powerful vibration. I'm going to call it a place of faith from which to flow. And I believe, Carly, the more Muhammad Ali said, I am the greatest, the more faith came to him, the more belief that came to him. And the same thing for anyone who's watching. You know, you might start saying, I am here. Maybe you're sick and you're not feeling your best. But if you begin saying and believing, I am healed, whole, and full of vitality. I think I shared on the last video that when I was traveling on the road a lot, I used to say, oh my God, I'm so tired from being on the road. <laughs> and the more I said my I amness of being tired, the more that was added to me. So this is great news because it shows you you're not a victim. You are powerful creator. You are a victor. Mm -hmm. You are a victor. You know, and the thing about that, it, all of what we're saying also uh, uh, becomes a part of that law of attraction. Because yeah. your I am will attract to you what it is that you are believing. And so in the, in the case, again, of talking about Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali, he continued to speak, I am the greatest. So the world around him, the people around him, the energy around him, wherever he went, treated him as though he was the greatest. And so because of that, that in itself continued to build up in him and make him the greatest. So it attracted that energy, that greatness, that energy of greatness. And he was treated as the greatest. He was respected as the greatest. He was seen as the greatest. So the, the, the universe made him the greatest. And it's the same thing as you said, I am prosperous. Mm -hmm. I am living the wealthy and abundant life. I am a child of God. I am made in the image of God. All those I am's are I am's that manifest and align ourselves with the greatness and the creative power of God's goodness and genius. So that in itself allows us to understand and mm -hmm. know that, but, but the key is using the I am words and the I am consciousness that truly resonates and aligns with who God is, because, you know, we don't, we're not talking about negativity, you know, there's some negative phrases people can use and, you know, all of that. And I guess to a certain extent that can uh, create that negative energy around you too. But we're talking about the great I am, the goodness mm -hmm. of I am, the power and love and the light and the truth of I am. And with those I am's, you can transform your life to truly live the life in the image of the great I am. Ooh, so that's I think so it's, good. it's power for us to truly understand that we have the power. One thing that I say, and I don't say it daily, but it's part of the, the I am's I say over myself sometimes, I am a victor. 
I am victorious. And because, you know, we all as humans, we are spiritual beings having a human experience, but we all as humans from time to time, we have those times and moments in our lives where we don't necessarily align with that energy because of maybe something that has happened or something you're going through, but that's when you have to even dig deeper and allow that I am power to pull you up and raise you up and remind you of you are, I am, I am great, I am whole, I am well, I am healthy, I am wealthy, I am wise, I am affluent, I am influential, and I am, and I am, and I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, I just want to say to everybody who's watching, let me just, let us just give you some practical stuff. I wrote down a couple. So you're going to find some affirmations or some I am's that Carla said that resonate with you. Uh, I've been playing the piano for most of my life, but I'm not necessarily a concert pianist, so that wouldn't vibe with me. But, you know, I could say, you know, I'm a great pianist. So it has to be something that vibes with you. But here are just a couple of I am's. Find your own. Speak them out every single day. It may take maybe two to three minutes. With all of the faith that's on the inside of you, remember, it is a universal law and it's limitless and infinite. And whatever you add to it is what you will be added to you. So here are a couple, see if you can uh, uh, identify with them. I am a money magnet. I am well, whole, healed, and healthy. I am attracting an abundance of money, people, and prosperity into my life. I am a magnet for miracles. I am worthy to receive love. I am prospering and whatever I put my hands to prospers. So that's just a couple examples. I know you got some, Carla, but, but those words, those I am words really changed the atmosphere when I said them because I said them with all of the faith that's on the inside of me. So everybody who's watching, what would happen in your life before the end of 2020? if you practice and work consistent, you know, often, every day if possible, take two to three minutes and just speak out loud those faith-filled words, it will begin to change your life from that B word to the A word, abundance and prosperity. I agree with that completely. And before I say what I'm gonna say, you are pianist too, so am I. When you learn oh, something- are you? <laughs> I should have <laughs> known. <laughs> But you know what? We, we both would like to be great pianists, but we can play. <laughs> right, we can play. I play by music only, not by ear. Exactly. Uh, but you know, the thing about it is, I think just the I am is just sometimes for a person that is uh, learning and allowing their, their minds and their spirits and energy to transform with that. I agree with what you're saying. I'm a mighty money magnet. Uh, and oceans of money engulf me. I am prosperous. I am living the wealthy and abundant life. Sometimes with those, uh, those are uh, what should be incorporated in a person's uh, affirmations. However, in addition to that, sometimes it's just saying, rather than saying, I am a failure, you can say, I am a success. I am gainfully employed. Oh, that's I good. Love. I am confident. I love myself and I am lovable. You know, sometimes just the simplest part of getting a person to raise their consciousness because uh, in that is just getting people to also understand what wealth is. And we've talked about that and I know right. you a great job in, in uh, conveying what wealth is, what the abundant life is and just getting them to really just transform the whole energy of who they are as a person to attach themselves to see themselves as someone, as you said, who is worthy of the wealthy and abundant life. Because sometimes it's just getting a person to see themselves differently and see that they are lovable. I am lovable. Mm -hmm. I am beautiful. And it's not just talking about outward beauty. We're talking about inward beauty. Beauty that makes you uh, a person that is kind and operates with 
respect and compassion and consideration and strength. You know, all of that is a part of the transformational process. So when writing right. an affirmation, I know that you've probably written many, uh, and I have maybe one or two that are the main affirmations that I refer to. I, I for myself, I include all of those things because I want to make sure that I keep myself in a space of I am uh, in that alignment and, and energy with God. I am confident. I am a team player. I am uh, empowered. I am smart. I am beautiful. All of those things are just ways for me to personally keep myself confirmed in that energy of God, the great I am. Yeah, and you know, for people who would be more comfortable with scriptures, I mean, sometimes I, I might say, I'm an heir of God and join heirs with Christ Jesus. Uh, and I also say I'm the righteousness of God. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and wealth, abundance, prosperity, healing, and wholeness is is mine by divine right. But for anybody who's watching, just start where you are. You might just might be able to believe I am open to all of the abundance in the universe. It can be that simple. You know, Carla, something just dropped down in my memory. Uh, I, I knew of a guy who was just illiterate, couldn't even read that good, but he used to meditate on, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Wasn't mm -hmm. even educated, but he began to affirm that, you know, I'm blessed because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This man did this over years and that consciousness or that identity or that way of being was so deep on the inside of him, he began to get downloads from the spirit about investing in the stock market. And this man became a multi, multi millionaire from something as simple, what we think might be simple as, I am blessed because the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. So for everybody who's watching, just make it simple and just be consistent every day while you're in your car or while you are, you know, taking a shower or whatever. It don't have to be complicated, but I tell you that I amness, the law of I amness will move you from the B word to the abundance word. I agree with that. And I think that it's important for people to uh, be honest with themselves when it comes to the I am's. Yeah. You know, I am, and because as we talked about in the uh, previous uh, presentation, we talked about the need to uh, deny whatever it is that you're wanting to affirm. Uh, so in, in other words, be clear with yourself what it is that you are, are denying, what it is that you want uh, not, let me rephrase that, what it is that you don't want mm -hmm. and affirm what it is that you do want. So if you're not wanting to continue to live in that life of uh, mediocrity, in that life of just enough, then it's important that uh, you allow your mind to be transformed and operate with the affirmations that manifest the I am prosperous. I am a money magnet. I am uh, a woman or a man of integrity. All of that is a part of the uh, manifestation process because one thing that I realize as a person who uh, has been in the financial services for almost 30 years is that uh, when you manifest money, which is great because money is a tool Money is used and, and, and created by God to be a, a source of power, a source of strength, a source of love to enable us to do the things and live the good quality life that God created us to live. Uh, the key with that is getting people to truly know that is the truth. Yeah. So in manifesting the money is making sure that your energy, your mind, your soul is in alignment to truly receive the money that you wanted to manifest. So that's why it's important when you're saying I am money and I manifest uh, boatloads of money that you also manifest in integrity. You also manifest wisdom. You also manifest uh, a heart of kindness and a heart of, 
of compassion and, and consideration because you want all that to be aligned together. So all the manifestation of the prosperity, the wealth, and the abundant life truly is operating in a realm of goodness where it's just not about you, but it's about being a blessing to those around you. Right. My, my lawn man is just blowing my, my leaves. So uh, I heard what you said. And, and so we're just going to encourage people, if you haven't seen our other videos, to please go back and do so and just begin to practice this. We're, we are the talking pearls. And uh, of course, the young lady uh, that just gave such profound information is Carla Cargill at the financialtruth.com. And I'm Constance Arnold, fulfillingyourpurpose.com, uh, the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show. Anything else we want to say, Carla? I would like to give them an exercise to work with as you okay. have encouraged them to work on an affirmation. Uh, I would encourage everyone to at least uh, write down, at least for the next seven days. Okay. Write down, well, you know, they say 40 days. I think you said 68 days, but start writing down, I will say, the I am phrases that you are saying. Mm. Because be conscious of what those are. Because sometimes we're not conscious of what we're saying. So write those I am phrases down and allow yourself to, uh, you know, kind of let that uh, marinate in your mind to determine if those are the I am phrases that you want to really be a part of who you are. Right. And then make sure your I am phrases align with the great I am. So true. It's always great talking with and sharing with my uh, colleague, my sister, my friend, Constance Arnold of Think, Believe, and Manifest and FulfillingYourPurpose.com. And again, we encourage you to listen to our videos and our presentations. We actually have audios together. Constance has uh, That's right. been kind and invited me on her radio show uh, a couple of times. So she actually has recordings. There are audio recordings that you can mm -hmm. listen to on Think believe and manifest talk radio so be empowered we're glad that we can be a vessel and a channel to be uh, a source of truth for the great i am so excited all right carla this has been powerful as always okay